with uh, Ask the Watchman. And today we have uh, Yaku from God's Roadmap to the End, Aaron from God a Minute. And we are just going to see where it goes and talk about the things that we all know and love, and that's Jesus and him coming back. So um, let's start off with you, um, Aaron. Um, talk about uh, where, where, how did you get interested in um, really end times? I mean, what would, you know, tell, you, tell your story how that happened. You know what? Let me try and get my stream going on my end. <laughs> I'll do that. Okay. And and get back to you one minute. It's not working for some reason yet. Okay. So, Yaku. Okay. Um, I've see, I see people say I've got no sound on my side. Let me just see what's going on. Um, There's a sound issue. Yeah. It's strange. Hello, hello. Someone in the chat. Can you hear us or no? I know what's going on. I, I'll, I'll be all fixed up in one one minute here. Okay. Now I just need to see. I had sound earlier. I don't know why it's. Okay. Christian says that um, we can be heard perfectly fine. Okay. We're good. Yeah, let me just see. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why. All right. So. I'm I'm going live now. Now we're good. Okay. All right, then, um, Aaron. Okay. Perfect. All right, then, Aaron. All right. So go ahead, Ken. Ask your question. I'm I'm focused now. <laughs> okay. So my question is, I mean, you you know, we've probably all been in, in um, this kind of setting, and somebody says, "Well, how did you come to Christ?" My 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 question is, how did you come to becoming an an end times enthusiast? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I've always been, I always say I've been tight with Christ, you know, my, my whole life. I came to Christ as, as a child. Uh, I remember praying with my mother uh, before bedtime one night and sincerely believing it. And, you know, I felt like the spirit filled the room, so to speak, when I said that quote unquote salvation prayer, you know. And so I've always been good with Christ. I've never, you know, never left the faith or anything like that. I'm, sh I'm sure I've had my ups and downs in my life. You know, there's been seasons where, uh, you know, you're not studying, you're not reading the word and things like that, or, you know. Uh, you know, I go on a church or in a communities, but my faith was always, always there. It was always founded on Christ. It was always there. Uh, and then in 2012, I had my first, uh, my first child. And uh, I'll have to be careful with censorship. But um, when my midwife said, oh, you, you've got a choice when it comes to uh, the things, you know, um, got it. I said, what do you mean I got a choice? What do you mean I got a choice? Oh, no, no, you, you got a choice. What do you mean? I'm allowed to think. I'm allowed to educate myself. But what did you do? Mm -hmm. She kept on saying, you've got a choice. You've got a choice. You've got a choice. You've got a choice. And so that was that was back in 2012. And that's when uh, really I started studying hard about what's really going on in this world. You know, and. Right. Since 2012. And then in 2020, I was just casually watching some sports and things like that. And all of a sudden, uh, Trump comes on and, and closes the airports. Right. And uh, like, oh boy, oh boy, yeah, I think we're here now. We are in the season now. And mm -hmm. I was always waiting for the electronic system, you know, because, you know, in order for that mark of the, the thing to right. come, you need an electronic system to, uh, to to get you all set. So I just saw everything coming together like a puzzle. And it was in, really, it was March 2020. I was like, ah, okay, we're, we, we gotta be here. So I was studied, studied like crazy. Um, it was Bible every morning and YouTube every night, you know. Um, and then I wasn't even quite sure if it was a pre-trib or a mid-trib or a boat. I, I was not sure, but I knew we were in the season. I knew I had to figure this out. And so fast forward six months later, we're in the summer. And um, I said, okay, God, I think I know what's going on here. I, I think I can contribute to, you know, this world. Well, would you like me to start a channel or, or something? And I flipped open to Ezekiel 33, the Watchman chapter. So, okay, I think I got my answer. So my first video, I didn't know what I was doing. I just took a bad picture of myself, made it my YouTube profile for a while. My first uh, video was one minute long, John 14, 6. And I said, yeah, Jesus is the only way, guys. I, it's not going to sugarcoat it. You know, this is it. This is it. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't realize I was going to start looking for 
the return and of the, or the, I should say the escape. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be looking at dates. I didn't think I was going to be singing songs. I didn't think I'd be doing humor videos. I didn't think I'd be talking to amazing guys like you. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, yes, Lord, I'll do it. My, and it was always yes, yes, yes. And, uh, wow, what a ride, what a rush. I'm having so much fun. Uh, this is such, for me, this is something that I can look back now when I'm in the clouds and say, yeah, that was fun. That was a moment, you know. Um, you know, having said that, there are some frustrating times in my life, you know, because in Canada here in Ontario, it's, it's pretty rough right now. Uh, and some people are, have it really bad. You know, they're going through some physical issues. They've got, they're just hanging on by a thread, you know. Um, but, you know, what a time to be living in, isn't it? It's so, so exciting. Anyway, that's my little spiel there with, uh, you know, how I came to start my channel, you know. Awesome. Yeah, and, and you know, you're, we're blessed by your channel. Yeah, you clearly are just having fun and loving the Lord, and and it's it's awesome. Um, okay, uh, Yaku. Uh, I came to the Lord at a very young age. My parents led me to the Lord when I was about two years old, um, and I basically I remember um, the night when I was still in the crib, you know, so or the the cot or whatever you call it. Um, and I was praying and I was asking the Lord to come into my life. And I still remember it to, you know, to this day and that I give my heart to, to him. And then later, I was about four years old or so. Then my father um, did sort of a, an official, you know, you know, say it with your mouth that you um, believe and so on. And later in my life, when people asked me, you know, when, when did you accept the Lord? I said, yeah, it was four years. When I was four years old, my father led me to the Lord, etc. And then. Um, I think it was about three or four years ago, the Lord reminded me about the fact that when I was two years old, I already asked him into my life, you know, so it wasn't really when my father um, took me when I was four years old. It was when I was about two years old, I, you know, I came to the Lord and he reminded me of that instance, which is now very clear in my mind again, you know, so um, then I grew up in a, a Christian home. Um, uh, Probably until a, you know, I was interested in end time events from being a teenager, you know, so I've always been looking at Bible prophecy and it interested me, uh, you know, from a very young age. Um, then uh, in about or at about 2003, 2004, uh, I saw some videos about what happened on 9-11 and some of the things that were not quite as forthcoming, you know, or not as true as the media made it out to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of opened some doors for me into how our enemy uses the, the media to, to get to people. And since that time, I've been, you know, making a, an intense study of things that the media, um, you know, share with viewers um, that might not be as accurate as, you know, people are led to believe. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then after that, <clears throat> what happened was um, I went to a seminar or a conference where uh, William Lane Craig spoke. Um, and the, the topic of the uh, this talk that he gave was, can man be good without God? So, you know, actually my, my cousin invited me to go with him. And when I listened to that, uh, or when I got there and I heard that was the topic that was going to be discussed, I thought, well, the Bible is very clear about, uh, you know, all, all men fall short of the glory of God and all of sin. So, you know, if you trust the Bible, it's not really necessary to have a philosoph philosophical discussion about it for an hour and a half. So at that point, the Lord led me to take his word very seriously, you know, so and that's where my um, focus on taking every letter and every jot and every tittle very seriously that, uh, what, you know, that's written in the Word of God. And he also led me to, to write a book about um, why you can trust God's Word as being the, the actual truth, you know, the full truth and nothing but the truth. So it's, you know, for, every, for anybody who is interested in reading that book, it's free. You can download it from the network or from, you know, internet. Um, it is, it's called Factual Faith. Um, belief founded on truth. 
So you're welcome to to grab a copy. It's I think there are two websites where you can find it, but you can just type in the name, and it should come up with one of the websites where you can download that book. But um, in that book, he also showed me, you know, all the uh, the levels of authentication that he's that he's put into his word. You know, so you can't really say I can only I've, I've got only to focus on a certain section of God's word and. Um, other sections might not be as important um, as this section because everything is integrated. You know, uh, the, our Heavenly Father tells us that we have to understand what happens in the past so that we can know what happens now and also in the future. So he works with patterns. Some of those patterns may have applied to the Israelites or to Noah or to Adam and Eve or whoever. But but those patterns do repeat again, and you know th there are often applications where you can see how that specific pattern is applied to us, you know, in this current situation that we currently in, find ourselves in. So for that reason, it is very important to me to ensure that I I study the, the patterns, understand it, you know, and one of the patterns that I, I suppose um, you know is very important to me is understanding the the harvest and the temple models that are associated with believers so in that sense you know if you if you understand those models everything where there are divisions being made between believers becomes more obvious and more understandable you know where if you don't understand those models it's confusing you know so you don't know why there are divisions in the body and you know why certain scriptures show you that there are 10 virgins but then they are split in two and they are servants but they are split into good and evil servants etc so if you understand the harvest and the temple models those are the things that uh, become you know more evident and more understandable um and then yeah i suppose um the, the revelation 12 sign came about you know so i think mm -hmm. scotty clark was the one who uh, discovered that um and i was following him i think before he he saw that Mm -hmm. uh, before he so came I. onto that, yeah, and uh, you know, I started my own studies, and um, then the Lord led me from about 2015 or so to to you know look at what the the Word of God says about it and how this, and then you know all these revelations came to me, and um, I thought, no, I, I've I've got to make uh, you know videos about this because it's it's you know I, I get goosebumps if I just think about it, you know all the. Uh, the intricacies that that he's put in his word right from the beginning, you know, the fact that this Revelation 12 sign only occurs twice in history, you know, in the form that um, we saw on September 23rd, 2017. The other instance of it occurred, I think, 3915 BC on 6th of, 6th of August. So that would be around about the time, you know, when Adam and Eve maybe stepped into sin, you know, so... Um, and then these two heavenly signs would be book uh, or bookends, I suppose, to the 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 rule of man on the earth. Um, and then obviously we've got the the period of waiting that we need to go through after that sign occurred, which is fast coming or fast approaching. So yeah, I suppose that's that's sort of a a bit of a history on my on my side. Well, wow, that's amazing. Um, particularly the part where you remember when you were two years old. <laughs> that, yeah. that caught my attention. I don't remember anything that that way. Yeah. Um, or at that young of an age. So I'll give my quick answer. I was raised Catholic, and um, and I was uh, in the Navy. I was on a submarine. And um, when I one night, one of the, my friends who was a Christian, a Protestant, invited me to watch a different movie other than the one the rest of the guys were watching. Um, and it, so yeah, I went and I watched, and it was, um, I was about 23 years old. This is by 1990. It was, um, it was the second movie of the Thief in the Night series. It was the Distant Thunder. And I just spent the whole time jaw dropped. I never heard of a rapture. I never heard, this is in the Bible, really? You know, like I certainly never learned any of that from going to the Catholic type of weekend school that I went to. Um, and ever since I became Protestant, I, I started reading the Bible, and I've always just loved uh, those teachings. And then over the years, I listened to a lot of teachers, like people like Hal Lindsey and and um, uh, Hilton Sutton, and I can't name all Jack Van Impey, Chuck Missler, um, huge, huge, huge fan of Chuck Missler, always have been. And um, but, but in all those years, 
um, it seemed pr pretty much everyone always really stuck with imminence. It was always, you know, at any time, any second, any minute. And there, there's kind of, there was this aura of, uh, don't even think about trying to know when. That's, that, that's kind of like heresy almost. Um, but then over time, and, and then people like um, Harold Camping came around. And in fact, his prediction was, was May 21st, 2011, which is exactly, you know, 10 years ago from May 21st. Um, and then, you know, they, everyone just ridiculed him. And I kind of did too. I figured, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, but then I would say over, you know, since then, it just started getting more and more and more like, well, why aren't we supposed to try to figure out when? Even maybe not the exact day, but at least the seasons, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, and then like you, you know, I wanted to just do something about it. Now, your, you know, your videos, Yaku, are, are amazing, yeah, for sure. Um, they're so deep. You get so deep into the word. Um, so, okay. No, we got, I'm going to, uh, we're going to be looking at the chat, looking for certain questions. Um, so just go ahead and type them if you have them, and we'll take what we can. And, and the simpler, easier, shorter ones are going to be more, uh, likely to get picked and something that's you know much, uh, more complex. And I, I want to ask uh, you guys: When did you guys start your channels? I started mine in September 2020. Yeah, so I started mine I think in 07. Um, but and I just it was really just what I what I did is I would find um, little pieces. I would just basically repost other people's little things that I thought were really good. Maybe a little clips of this preaching or that preaching and. Um, uh, Got into a little trouble with copyright violations, so had to rectify that. Um, and then, and then I just started making them just, just, just little ones here and there, but never the caliber, never the, the frequency like you, Aaron, or or the or the depth and the in the in the quality um, of Yaku's. Um, yeah, my, mine started in uh, what June twenty sixteen, I think, was my first video wow. that I put out. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, Aaron, um, and I am going to, we're going to get to some of these questions. Um, you had things that you were going to talk about with May 17. And you know what? Yeah. So I, I, I like numbers. I mean, I don't go nuts into numbers, but I like, when I see a cool number, I like, yeah, it's fun. So there's lots of fun numbers between May 17th and May 26th. So why don't I just kind of, you know, talk about it for a few minutes and let me go to my pile here. And um, where is oh, also just one quick thing I want to interject. Someone on the chat did say that um, Yaku, that your stream on your channel is muted. Yeah, it sounded like it. So yeah, um, yeah, they can hear us all now. So that's that's good. Okay, good. All right, yeah. great. Yeah, apparently I'm okay too. So that's good on my side. Okay. okay, so all right, so just some fun numbers for from May 17th to May 26th. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. You know, it might not mean anything, but some of these numbers are kind of fun. So May 17th, um, you know, it's IR5, right? And, and Ken, you mentioned that in your video. Um, so, you know, perhaps this is the true Israel's birthday, right? Uh, if you count from May 14th, 1948 to May 17th, 2021, all right, that's 26,666 <clears throat> days. If you divide that number by 30 prophetic months, that equals 888.8 and then 6 infinity, which is really cool, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, if you take, this is not really related to this date, but um, 144,000 in Revelation 13, and you divide that by 6, by 6, by 6, that will give you 666.6 infinity. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting how Revelation 14 mathematically relate to Revelation 13, you know, the 144,000 and, mm -hmm. and six, six, six. And now this, uh, the, this is also a fun fact too. It's just fun numbers thing. One is A, as in 144, right? One is A, D is uh, the fourth letter, mm -hmm. and another D is the fourth letter. So we have A, D, D. The symbol for add is the cross. Isn't that fun? No. Um, just that, you know, I don't want to go, I don't, I don't go too crazy with numbers, but that's just a fun little thing, right? Um, May 17th, 508 days from December 26th, uh, 2019 eclipse. So we have 508 days from that eclipse. And in Strong's, 508 means upper room. Upper room, right? That's fun. Uh, I'll skip some of these numbers. Uh, 
you know, I don't know, like maybe you guys can speak into this too, uh, if it's actually Pentecost. Apparently Enoch was born and, and taken on Pentecost as well. You know, so that's another fun thing. And you guys were talking about the Christ angle the other day, or was I talking with Ken about that, I think? Uh, anyway, it's 1,335 days from the Christ angle. So that's just May 17th. All right, so May 19th is three years, seven months, 26 days past the Revelation. So again, I'll say three years, seven months, 26 days. So 726, 726 means. Um, so. It's also 1260 days from when Trump declared Jerusalem Israel's capital. And 1260 is a big number, biblically, right? Uh, if you go to the Torah calendar, you go to the, the Julian. May 19th, it's 2,459,354. And you minus it from the creation date, it gives you um, 2,191,500. You divide that by 365.25, you get a perfect 6,000 years. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain that, but um, uh, George from The Return of the King actually laid it out pretty good in a, in a spreadsheet, and it was really good. It's also 72 weeks and six days from the eclipse. So again, you have a, a 726. It's 510 uh, days from that eclipse, and that in Strong's means upper or higher or higher lying. So that's May 19th. May 20th, it's 1,335 days past the Revelation. So there's that biblical number in one, right? Um, and then a sister shared this with me. I thought it was interesting. I, I don't know, but it's 2,300 days from. Uh, the Super Bowl halftime show, and, and we know that Super Bowl halftime shows are never too, uh, they're not heavenly. Um, right. And that, you know, that's a reference, that, that number is brought up in Daniel 8, 14. And then uh, May 26, 23rd is 153 days past the conjunction of December 21st. It's 222 days left in the year. Uh, I'll skip some of this other information. And then we're on May 26th here. Um, of course, we you guys are you know, pointing this data, I think it's a great day. Um, it's total lunar eclipse, super blood moon. It's potentially the true second Passover, which Yaku was talking about. Uh, you know, so that's actually talked about in nine numbers nine six through eleven, and I'll just read nine eleven numbers nine eleven. It's interesting that it's actually chapter nine verse eleven mm -hmm. on the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight they may keep it. So they're talking about the second Passover. It's basically the people like couldn't do it for whatever reason. There's multiple reasons, but if they couldn't get the first Passover, here's the leftover Passover. Here's the backup plan, second Passover. Well, that seems to fall on May 26th, which is the lunar uh, blood moon, more or less, depending on the calendar that you look at. So, um, and then Song of Solomon's chapter two, is talking about the fig tree. This is not really related to May 26th, but we're kind of in the season of, of figs, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, ripening. Uh, also, the blood moon is more or less at its fullest at uh, 7.26 UTC time, uh, and it's in Scorpius. I mean, I think the blood moon kind of goes between more or less about, you know, 6 till 9 UTC time, but mm -hmm. it's at pretty much at its fullest, very close to 7.26, which is very interesting. Again, we have a 7.26 Arpazzo reference. And then if you have times... May 26, um, to 5 times 26 equals 130. In the Strong's, it means shedding of blood. Isn't that fun on a blood moon? 5 times 26 equals 130 shedding of blood. And then uh, I guess my last little number here is it's 1,342 days from the Revelation, Revelation sign. In the Strong's, that means to rise. It means to grow. It means to highly... Highly exalted, it means lifted, it means risen. So this is fun, just fun numbers. I know I kind of said it kind of fast and, you know, some people probably can't take it all in real fast and it's nicer to have a chart in front of you. But my, you know, the main point is there's a lot of exciting numbers. I even skipped some numbers too, between May 17th and 26th for a potential escape. I mean, uh, right now it's hard for me to look past May just because of all the fun numbers. I, I, I'm having a hard time looking past me. I, I'm, but I'm also very happy to look past me if we're out of here. <laughs> I mean, if we're still here by me, right? So, yeah. anyway, I want to share that stuff, yeah. There's a buzzing sound coming from somewhere. It's probably mine. It's probably my mic, uh, Keen. 
Okay. So is it, is it bad or is it just because okay, it's heat? Suddenly it's getting a little louder, almost like a truck engine getting a little closer to us. Okay, just because you see, or, so I, I know I've got some issues with. Yeah, this mic. You just oh, kick that's it better. a bit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You just turned it off. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes, something that I would like to just add is, you know, um, I think uh, from today, basically, where Israel is celebrating the, I'm not sure if they're really celebrating at this point, but their 73rd birthday um, on the Gregorian calendar. Yeah. So, you know, that if we if we read what's written in Psalm 90 about the, the generation, you know, of uh, 70 years or if by reason of strength, it goes into 80. Um, and we know now that we are going to the 80 mark. Um, there's only seven years left, basically, from today going forward. And um, I was thinking this afternoon about Noah's situation, you know. So seven days before the flood came, he was taken into the ark and um, he never saw the outside world again, you know. Mm -hmm. So... It is very possible that we we could see a similar thing happen to those who are waiting, that the, the blessing that is pronounced over those who wait in Daniel 12 um, might might be a similar pattern that is applied to believers, you know, so um, that we enter into the ark with our bridegroom and we have seven days during which the wedding would take place. And then this also brings to mind the parable about the the king who made a, ma a marriage for his son you know so he went out and got all the people and they all had um, garments for the wedding and there was one guy there who didn't have a garment and the question then is how did that person get there because it is not possible for uh, you know a, a, would an angel make a mistake and take somebody to heaven uh, that's not supposed to be there so who is this person in a, a didn't have his wedding garments and was then bound hand and foot and, and cast out. So my um, opinion about the matter would be that that would be Satan because he's still, you know, in front of the throne accusing the brethren. So mm -hmm. he's, he's not one who would have a wedding garment and he would be the person who would be bound hand and foot and thrown out or cast out. Um, so, yeah, it's... I think, you know, the next five days are going to be very, very important to, to have or keep our eyes on and see what happens. Um, but if not, then certainly the week that follows after that. So definitely very interesting and excited to see what happens. Yes, it is. And I remember, um, you know, some people would say, well, you, uh, when you talk about Noah, they'll say, well, Noah wasn't, he wasn't removed from the earth. He was preserved during it. And then, and well, yeah, but Enoch was raptured before the flood. So um, I believe that the, that the typology there, the foreshadow, would be that, that Enoch would be like the, the, the type of the Gentile bride of Christ, and then um, Noah and his family preserved like the nation of Israel. Okay. Um, so um, Aaron, um, you talked about, last night we, had, we did the prayer, it was great, thank you for having me. And then we had a little, we were talking about, I wanted you to, to say what you were saying before you had a, you were talking to Tyler, I, I think we talked about this before we came live, about your conversation with Tyler regarding the date setting. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, I, the thing that I was saying was that, um, Sometimes it only takes 10 seconds in a, in a, in a video or, or, or a sermon or something for somebody to just totally change their direction and how mm -hmm. they think about things. And um, Tyler from Generation 24 is, he's not really a date guy, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't fight them. He's, he's fine with them. Like if somebody wants to try and find a date, go right ahead. So, mm -hmm. so here I was in my, in my studying time, probably in May of 20, was it 19 or 20? Yeah. May of 2020, around this time last year, I was reading my Bible, listening to everybody I could, and somebody asked him on a live stream, um, "Hey, what do you think about people setting dates?" And he said, uh, "Who cares? If they're trying to find when their father's coming, who cares?" He says, "I don't do that, but if anybody wants to do that, go right ahead." And so for me, I was that was just like a key that opened the door. He basically gave me permission to study in, in a way, 
to study things that I would have never studied before. And so that after that, I started to embrace the date guys because, okay, now I'm allowed to research and look into this. Thing. So, you know, just like, um, just like a little rudder controls a ship, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't take much to turn the direction. That, that was a moment. And, and uh, I was listening to lots of people and there was a little 10 second moments in a lot of people's videos that just kind of steered the ship and really helped me organize my thoughts. And so I guess one word of encouragement for anybody is, you know, a comment, a good, well-written comment, doesn't have to be long, could change the direction of everybody's ship. You know? mm-hmm. And a video, uh, you don't need a two hour video. It's, you know, it, you can say a lot in, in a two minute video, you know, um, but the point being is it just takes one little thing to just change the direction uh, on the ship. So I, I was happy that I, I watched that video and, you know, you grow up in a culture where, um, yeah, I'm always good with Jesus. Everything's good. We're not close to tribulations. I don't really need to think about it too much. Da, 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 da. Okay. We're close. Okay. Wait a second. What am I supposed to do with the dates? Am I supposed to do the date thing? Like, you know, I was just like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know. I don't know about anything, you know? And then, um, yeah, I'm allowed to look. Okay. And the thing about me is, um, I'm very, uh, I don't know what the word is. Uh, obsession would be the wrong word, but, um, <laughs> If I get my, my, yeah, if I get my, if my teeth sunk into something, I'm going to get to the end of it. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, that's how I've been my whole life. Uh, even when, you know, if I have to, you know, for example, I, I'm at my house, I had to buy a new furnace and a new air conditioner when I moved in. And, you know, within two weeks, I knew more than the sales representative about all the details. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, what, what are you, did you install these before? I'm like, no, no, that's, this is what I do. I just research things. And then. You know, when I had to buy tires for the car, I researched like 200 tires and I knew which tire I wanted and, and everything. I knew the model number, everything, uh, you know, I, I, so I studied to the point where I make the best decision possible. And then when I'm past that point, I forget about it. So now it's like, oh, Jesus is coming. Oh, time to study. Unfortunately, finding when Jesus is coming is much harder than picking a tire for your car or, or, or buying a furnace for your home, but it's the same kind of application. You know, and um, and even becoming a musician and, and being very skilled at a musical instrument, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of discipline to do that. And then you apply that principle to studying. And it, even like a, I lost a lot of weight about five years ago, maybe seven years ago. Just the whole principle of being consistent in your exercising and applying that to this whole thing. So uh, in many ways, my history of, of what I've done my whole life it's like I was, I felt like I was kind of designed for this moment and just my, the way I think, the way I analyze things, my approach, it's really, even the way I've conducted my small business up until now, which is basically totally gone, uh, Mm -hmm. more or less, but, um, it's all, everything, all the skills I've learned, I'm basically being able to apply it to this, uh, hopefully the last chapter of, uh, before our escape, right? That's right. Okay, well, I invite both of you guys, if you see comments that you want to answer, feel free. Um, we may not be able to take them all against the shorter, sweeter ones or, or easier. To, someone asked if anyone knows what Scotty Clark thinks of this. I don't know. Um, I would say that I know, I, I think Scotty Clark seemed to change his position after the Revelation 12 sign. Um, I he, he never declared dogmatically that the rapture would happen. He showed that there was good evidence for it, and you can take with it what you will. Um, but then he seemed to change a little bit afterwards. I don't know. I can't. I don't want to speak on his behalf. Um, I, I will say one thing. Uh, it's not an answer to a question, but I was thinking about this today as I was driving. I feel like we're in overtime now. I feel like. Um, for me, my hard wall date of confusion will be um, May 14th of 2022. Just because this whole fig tree thing in Israel, and we get past that, ah, man, we're gonna have to, I'm going to be scratching my head a little bit, going back to everything. Um, so I feel yeah. like it's, it could be any time now, you know? Uh, we're in the last yeah. year. It right. kind of made me, hopefully. You know? the, the only um, thing that would make me think that it might be a little longer than I always thought is if we end up with a different pope. If the current pope 
As long as he's still the Pope, I think it's got to be soon, because I think he's the false prophet, and he's not getting any younger. Um, but that's, um, yeah, that's, that, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I would be surprised if we still here in June, but that's just my own view. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah it, I think we've got very in interesting things um, lining up right now, um, especially with uh, the conflict with Israel. And I see, you know, Russia and Turkey is also getting involved. Um, so, you know, it looks like it's a, a repeat of, or, you know, an instance of the Ezekiel um, 38, 39 war, which I see more apply to the end of the millennium, um, you know, because of all the wooden weapons that they will use and burn for seven years, mm -hmm. which we certainly don't have in this instance, but the f that Israel will be surrounded, um, you know, and besieged, uh, that that's definitely on the way. So I think, you know, it's not going to let up from this point going forward. And um, it will probably be the, the Antichrist that will save them from you know, assure destruction, which we may not see. So, mm -hmm. okay. Someone asked, "Do you think Obama is God?" Now, I will say that I actually, on my channel, I, my son and I did the English voiceover for that for Nathan Nathan Nathan's vision when he was fifteen. Um, I didn't do it because I say I'm, I'm declaring that I agree with everything he said. Um, it's more of a submitted for your approval, take with it what you will, chew the hay, spin off the sticks. Um, but uh, I think that he did have a valid vision of Israel's future from Israel's perspective. He did say that Obama was Gog. A lot of people thought that that whole thing was disproved as soon as Obama was no longer president. I don't think so. Um, I think that it, that it still could be. I don't know. I, I, uh, I kind of steer from the political stuff, um, but um, my general thing answer is they're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I think yeah. I'll just leave it there, you know? Um, right. Yeah. And I know Chuck Missler used to used to believe, he used to say that he thinks, he, his, his theory was that Satan doesn't know when the rapture is, but he always had somebody in place to be ready to be the Antichrist. Um, yeah, I'm not, I remember hearing that before. It does, that does kind of make sense, yeah. I'm not quite agreeing with that because I think, you know, Satan knows exactly when it will be. That's just my my viewpoint because he's got access to, uh, you know, the signs in the heavens that God has given us. And, I mean, it was the angels, basically, that taught Enoch how to understand what, what they mean. Um, so I'm of the opinion that he knows exactly when his time runs out. And that's why he's been planning for you know, millennia, basically, to, to come to this point. And we can see how uh, the plans that they have for bringing their um, short time on the earth where they will rule uh, about, you know, and given the, the fact that the, the things we see happening in the world right now was contained in a letter from 1871, is sort of confirmation, you know, it, it's not possible for a human to come up with those plans and, you know, carry them through as they have, you know, so it's definitely uh, uh, some supernatural being who's at least, you know, able to live longer than humans can with a plan and the ability to see, to see it through. And, you know, also when uh, Jesus was tempted in the, the wilderness, Satan said, you know, all these kingdoms belong to me and I can give it to whom I want. You know, so at that point, we already shown that that Satan is in control of the kingdoms of the world. And everybody who receives a position of authority in this kingdom has to submit to, you know, his authority. And um, as such, I, I can see how all the governments in the world are being you know, used to bring this plan about, you know, and some of them may not know that they part of it, maybe, I don't know. Um, it seems that, you know, some of the the speeches and comments that, um, you know, uh, politicians would make uh, would, would say that they're not aware of what's going on, but they obviously answer to people above them who answers to people above them, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm of the opinion Satan knows when his time is running out, but I mean, it's my opinion. I could be wrong. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Do you think he knows the exact day? 
Um, I think so. I think, you know, if there's a, a specific marker that um, marks the day, you might not know the hour, but I think he knows the day. Because, I mean, uh, uh, there might be, you know, even this Nibiru um, um, signs that everybody is looking for. And, I mean, I, I also looked at that back in 2016 when I started my channel. Um, you know, it looked like this is something that will be, uh, there will be some conflict between Nibiru and Jupiter, uh, which matches what we read in uh, Genesis 3 verse 15, where, you know, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent are in conflict and they bruise, bruise each other. So that would be, you know, if, if that message is mimicked in the heavens, then you would have this collision between two um, celestial objects. Uh, and it also mimics what we read in Revelation 12, you know. So if that is a sign that, that the, the Lord is giving us at some point and Satan knows what it means, then you would know when that happens and also, you know, what would follow, in my opinion. Yeah, well, that, that makes sense. He um, He's had a lot more time to study it than, than any of us. Yes. Have. So, okay. Um, now, some people will say, some people, I know a lot of people love to lean on the fact that Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, only only God in heaven, not the angels. Um, anyone want to talk about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump jump on uh, on that one immediately. <laughs> so the, the, the passage just before that one says, my uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day, you know, the day when heaven and earth will pass away, that is what nobody knows the day or the hour of, not the rapture. Mm -hmm. So it's very clearly written there if these people, you know, uh, care to, to read um, some of the passages just in front of that. Um, it would be quite clear to see that it's not referring to the rapture. Right. And another thing is that was a present tense statement. Yes. That, you know, just like, for example... Yeah. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, I thirst. Yes. Unless we're concerned that he's still thirsty. Yes. That was a present tense statement then, you know. Yeah, so definitely. He's been with the Father, and you know, yeah, that was then. Uh, yeah, and the other, the other response is, okay, even if you want to put that in a rapture context, uh, it doesn't say the day of the hour, but it doesn't say the week. Yeah, for sure. Or the year, I mean, yeah. Right. That's right. In but, the, in the, go ahead. Yeah, but, I mean, I would agree with Yaku, who said, basically, um, there's lots of things in the Bible where it's like, well, is it talking about the rapture or is it talking about the second coming? So you've got mm -hmm. to look at it from what, what event are they actually talking about, right? Yes. Right. Um, and then also in Matthew 24, which is where this is, right? Well, it's actually in a few spots, I believe. But uh, if you read a few verses down, how many times does he, does he say watch? Watch. Mm -hmm. Keep on watching. In yes. Revelation 3, if you will not watch. If you will not watch, then you will not know. Yes. Yeah. Implying that if you do watch... You probably you will know. know, or at least know the season. And in Thessalonians, yeah. right? Uh, you were yeah. not kept in darkness. You were children of the light. You know, things mm -hmm. like that. So um, usually the people that are saying you won't know the day or hour are the people that just aren't researching. Yeah. That, that just, it's like a cultural sentence that they just know to say. It, it, and it, right. Exactly. They just, right to, it's really club, yeah, just club you with that one little verse. And, yeah, so how so dare I, you I think made, about uh, it? So I made a, uh, I think a four or five minute video. I called it 40 responses to no one knows the day or at the hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I copy and paste on the comments when people read those. <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, you get those every, well, you get those a lot, right? Yeah, almost every video. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I also wonder at people's, um, you know, the desire for the world at this point, you know, this, if you look at the, the world and the current situation that, that the, the world is plunged into, you can't imagine that people would want to stay here and continue. I mean, I suppose you need a, a different mind frame to to want to be here. I mean, I have got no desire to be in this world anymore with mm -hmm. everything that's going on. I mean, it's just lies everywhere, you know, so there's nothing true um, coming through to you anymore. You know, everything that is true is sort of uh, removed from, uh, you know, so... The social environment mm -hmm. you're not allowed to say the right things you have to be pushed into you know everything is sort of upside down at this point so and i mean this 
it, it makes you sick. Also, all the, the things that you see happening in the world, you know, with all the um, the revelations that are occurring with what's been happening behind the scenes and with what, what's what been done to children. And so, you know, behind the scenes, it's it's just shocking to, to think about it. Um, uh, and, you know, to, to think about what we would, what awaits us in heaven is, is so, um, you know, it frees your, uh, what's the words that I want? Um, that's why my videos is better because I can script it before I make it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you don't feel like you're in a, a prison, you know, so it, it feels like you, you free and, you know, that's why my thoughts are often, uh, on passages such as the ones we find in Isaiah 64, where it says, you know, no, no, I have seen and ear has heard and has come up in the imagination of, of any person of what God has prepared for those who love him, you know, so and that, is, that is, yes, I'll wait for him. Yeah, in, exactly. In that, in that verse, there was all foretold, I think was the channel. And, um, I don't remember his name. He did a really good study on on the word wait, and he got to that verse where right? you just quoted same word that's in Daniel twelve twelve. That yeah, less yeah. than wait. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, so that is so amazing. I mean, the, it looks like the Lord has has sealed up that understanding of a thousand three hundred thirty five days up to you know sort of a week or two before something amazing could happen. So yeah, it's so exciting to see what this could mean. Right. And that's why, yeah. you know, when I mentioned before, when, when I talked about how Chuck Missler didn't think that, that he had all the same that the Antichrist because he didn't know. Another thing to keep in mind is it's kind of unfair to Chuck because yeah, he's not sure. living here right now. Yeah. The Holy yeah. Spirit is unsealing even more. Yes. Um, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one thing he always said was, you know, um, he couldn't understand why the, the, the disciples couldn't recognize Jesus after his resurrection. I don't know if you picked up on that. Yes. Yes. Um, so, I mean, if you're in a glorified body, you should look a little different than what you look like, you know, in your mortal body. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was strange that he didn't see that or didn't think about that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, this this also interesting that Jesus performed similar miracles uh, before his resurrection, yeah, before his resurrection and after his resurrection. So he walked on the water before his resurrection and after his resurrection. He told Peter to cast the, you know, net on the side of the ship to, to catch him feast be, uh, before his resurrection and after his resurrection. And on, on both instances after his resurrection, they didn't know who it was, which is quite interesting, you know, to think that his disciples didn't know him or didn't know that it was he. And even uh, on the road to uh, Emmaus, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he, I, I think it was seven miles or so that they walked together uh two of his disciples and they never knew it was actually the lord that was speaking to him mm -hmm. so i mean those kind of things are quite intriguing to think about you know so um just three days prior they would have known exactly who it was that they were speaking to and then after his resurrection they had no clue until he revealed himself to them right. well yeah to, to, to uh okay yeah to that point um well even in uh joseph right the brothers came to egypt and they didn't know it was Joseph. They didn't. Uh, they didn't see yes. it. And it yeah. seemed just like the road they're walking on the road. Jesus they didn't know it. And uh, and and you know Judas was used as a character, but he, he didn't really know that he was being used for that purpose. Of yes. Prayer. And um, and you know just like uh, we have to have oil in our lamp and, and all those kind of things. You know, if you were to walk through the forest with just a little candle, you only see what's directly in front of you. Yeah, you, you can't see one kilometer down the road. You can only see a few steps ahead of you. You know, so mm -hmm. I think for it to a certain extent, God t does this on purpose, uh, and I don't fully grasp why, understand why. Maybe He just wants us to totally trust Him through the whole faith journey. Uh, for sure, yeah, that mm -hmm. would be definitely one of the the things I've. I mean, I've experienced it as well. As well, you know, so you. You find yourself in situations where um, sometimes you have a plan B and C, you know, if the Lord doesn't come through for you and then he doesn't because you because of those other plans, you you're not fully relying on him. And I mean, I've recently been in a situation where there's just no other choice. <laughs> so and, and you can see this disaster approaching and you say, Lord, I'm in your hands. I trust you completely. 
And then he just opens up the doors and say, walk right through and do not worry. I look after you. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, and I think Aaron, you're right. You know, so he doesn't uh, give us too much information uh, ahead of time because otherwise, you know, there would be no need for us to, to search for him every day. You know, so he would basically sort of give you your daily bread, which you need from his word to, to know where to go tomorrow um, and what to do now. Uh, but it, it might not tell you what will happen next week, you know. So that's why it's always um, necessary to stay in the Word every day and to, to get your spiritual bread from there. That's good. And when Jesus told a blind man, I think in Matthew 9, he says, according to your faith, is it, is it done unto you? So more faith, more more blessing. Um, yeah, it's, it's also so interesting. Sorry, go for it, Aaron. And there are so much references in the Bible about blind, blind people being healed and now they can see. But that's also, uh, there's more to it than just a blind guy being able to see. I think it very much often resembles uh, spiritual blindness. And now now you can see. And Jesus was the one that, that healed people. He, he's the one that gives us sight. Right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. So. Um, Okay, a question I wanted to ask um, you, um, Yaku. Um, you, you do uh, amazing work with, uh, you talk about what the enemy knows, and, and the stuff you find in the iPad Goat videos are incredible. I don't know how you find that stuff. It's, it's awesome. Um, so, but the question that, that I, I was wondering is how, does, does the enemy know things by, well, I know there's things that obviously the enemy plans, and a lot of that stuff, and in, in, it, it's in the, uh, predictive programming is is based on their plans, but when it comes to things like, um, is, is there also is it also just knowing the Bible, um, or or is is it like for example, um, well you did say that that you believe he knows the rapture date. I know George from Return of the King, he said that he thought it would be feasible that God Himself, the Holy Spirit, moved. In the Simpson thing, where Homer knows it's May 18th, he, he speculated that maybe you know, well, since since the enemy is thumbing his nose at us rapture believers with that Simpson that's totally mocking the rapture, perhaps God said, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you know the date so that when it does happen, it, you know, in, in, in the lost people who might find that might think, wait a minute, this thing really did happen, and it wasn't the aliens that, that, that took away the haters, which is probably going to be the lie. It's another mm. topic. Or, or, or is it is it the enemy? Does the enemy have a clairvoyancy abilities like evil? I think like Nostradamus and the crystal ball type of thing. Well, I, I think there's um, sort of two approaches that you have to take uh, to looking at this. Um, the first would be is the question: um, Why is Satan doing this? You know, why is he? Uh, and if you look at things like The Simpsons and things that have already occurred, according to what they've shown, um, you know, you can say that there's definitely evidence for the fact that they predicted things before they happened and then things turned out that way, you know. So, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the question for me would be why would Satan do this, you know? Uh, what, what would be his purpose to tell everybody what he's going to do and, um, you know, to let, let people know before the time, uh, you know, what will happen. And, you know, the, the idea that I get is that Satan knows that when judgment comes, he is going to be judged severely for, um, you know, all the deception and lies that he's told uh, and basically for uh, causing many of God's people to, you know, to perish. And to do sort of a blame shifting, um, it would be prudent for him to warn people before things happen to them uh, so that he can say, well, you know, I'd warned them before the time. They didn't take it seriously. So I am not fully to blame for the, the fact that they walked into this trap. You know, so I get the feeling he's doing it to, to lessen the, the punishment on himself uh, because if he de deceived people without any warning, it would be a different thing, you know, so... Where, where he gives warning, and it's, I mean, it's throughout the media, you can see predictive programming telling you about things that are coming, and as time gets closer to the point where things are going to happen, 
it becomes so clear, especially uh, within the, the iPad Go 2 animation, which, I mean, for many years I've seen, uh, or, I mean, the, the, Lord has, the Lord has put this before me and said, you know, look at this and look at that and look at this. And he would then, you know, confirm it for me in three other places where, you know, suddenly you see something which you, you know, this is from the Holy Spirit that just revealed something to you so that you can share it with other people. Um, but during the, especially the last year that we've been um, looking at what they show there, it's so easy to see, you know, what that image with the, the girl, uh, Lily, holding the apple with the blue figurines around her and then the the timeline on the back wall is, is representing, you know, so it, it it's representing the what what's, ha what's happening in the world right now. And I mean, there's an upcoming event at the end of May um, scheduled on that image as well. So um, obviously this was, this has been there since 2012. So uh, he's obviously known that there's going to happen something and these plans from 1871 has been such that it would drive the world to get to this point. I mean, it's, it's planned out long before. And I mean, even this war that is now sort of brewing between Israel and uh, its neighbors, um, as, as part of that plan. So, um, I don't know. It's, I don't know if that answers your question, Ken, but, um, that's sort of my opinion about why he's doing it. Um, because, mm -hmm. um, I think he is going to, I mean, for eternity to be punished for, you know, misleading the world. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to be quite severe, I think. Oh, yes. Um, so Jim asked, is the Satan think he can possibly win? Or is he just trying to bring as many people down with him as possible? Yeah, I think the latter option, yeah, taking sure. as many of God's people to to hell mm -hmm. with him, just because he hates good and God and mm -hmm. people, you know. Right. But I think he has deceived a lot of the people that run this world. Um, yeah, for sure. They might think that he actually can win. So he's got them deceived, so they don't go to bat for him. Yeah. All, yeah. all they need to do is say, you know what, never mind, I'm going to go give my heart to Jesus. And then they're yeah. out. So they have to be deceived. Yeah, and I think, you know, people that are deceived in that way are so short-sighted. I mean, they might get power, fame, and money, and the things that, you know, people who, who are sort of carnal and worldly would desire. But, I mean, we serve, uh, you know, the king of the universe who made everything, and everything belongs to him anyway. So why would you want to sell your soul for maybe 20 years of something that is, that is fleeting anyway, uh, and then end up with nothing for your eternity. So, uh, there was a, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, I don't want anything in this world at this point. I just want heaven. <laughs> yeah. And you know, to add to that whole Satan thing, um, you know, love can only exist in a world where there's choice, you know? So if there's no right. choice, if there's no reciprocating choice, to love, then we're just robots. So, um, you know, that's part of the reason why he, he made he gave the option for Adam and Eve to have that tree, right? Um, otherwise, if they didn't have the choice to go eat the fruit, love wouldn't. We wouldn't really have that reciprocal response to an actual true relationship with Christ. He could have made robots, but he didn't. Yes. And so, but because we have a choice, we have a love and choice code. I think Satan has to work under that umbrella as well. He's got to yeah. present it in such a way that humans can have a response to a choice. Yeah. A, a question that I had from somebody at some point was, um, we know that our Heavenly Father does not like to mix things, you know, so he doesn't allow people to wear cotton and wool clothes that are mixed together. You know, you're not supposed to mix seed together. Um, but then you get to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Where did that come from? Because it's a mixture of good and evil together in one tree. I never thought about that. But I just, I always imagined that before the knowledge of good and evil, they, they were just, it's kind of like the way we, you know, when our kids to be. I don't want my young kids to know how, how evil things are. And, mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then there is opposite. But, just, but it's just, if, if everything's good, then good doesn't mean anything. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 it, he had to. He had to provide an option. I think for humanity. I think he had to provide that because mm -hmm. it, really the re the reason why he created us was for relationship with him. Yeah. And yeah. we he can't have a true relationship with robots. 
you know, he has to give us the choice and we get to, mm. and he gave us the choice to pick and how merciful and how amazing is that? Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that explains the whole Satan thing and why he's, you know, sort of pre-showing what he's doing because if he, I think he has to, that's part yeah. of the code. That's part of the guy. Yeah. Um, and just so all the viewers here uh, know, Ken made a really cool uh, video about a day or two ago, I think, right, Ken, about the blood moon of May 26th. And I, I think all three of us are on the same page here. We're all looking at a, a late, late May, currently escape, possibly. And, uh, yeah. Okay, I just turned my mic up a little bit because someone said that it was low. Is that better? For me, it's the same. But... Oh, okay. I went from 110 to like 125. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I, yeah, I made the video. Um, and uh, Yaku mirrored it, and they got out a lot of traffic. So thank you for that. Not that, not that I meant it to just try to get traffic. I'm just trying to do if God shows me something, and I want to, and I believe He wants me to share it. I do. Um, so thanks for bringing that up, Aaron. Uh, what what happened is, like I said, I've been listening to Chuck Messer for years and years and years, and I'm walking my dog in the morning like I always do. And for some reason, that that one point came to me about that. Uh, the Chuck Missler part where he talked about the, the Bible codes and the Torah, that one specific one that's where you seem to have the word um, Torah pointing frontwards and backwards in a symmetric manner to the middle where is um, Yahweh. Or in, um, and that stuck with me. And I'm wondering if, I wonder if the same kind of symmetry exists in, in the eclipses. So I got a spreadsheet and I put in the dates of all of the total eclipses. I didn't do any partials. Um, from like 2014, beginning with the, the Tetrad for like 14, 15 years. And then I and I just started looking for numbers. And then I saw where three of them matched. And I thought, well, is there something here? And uh, yeah, just one thing led to another. And I really, I, I think the Holy Spirit was helping me there. I sure hope that I'm not just off on a, on a tangent. I try to be careful. You know, everything I do, I really take seriously the warning of James 3.1 which, you know, is the teachers are going to have a stern judgment. And I would hate, hate, hate to know that I'd made a mistake and, and, and led somebody down the wrong way. So it's just, this is what I, I think I found. This is what um, God has shown me. So hopefully that was valuable. And I got good feedback on it. So I'm glad it was. I mean, I, that was very, it's very cool. And I think all the viewers should know that we're, you know, we're always just speculating, really. We're, we're trying our best to just study and, figure it out if, the, if our days pass oh well what are you gonna do <laughs> you know um just keep on looking keep on watching you know um but uh I, for me personally i find it exciting to look at dates i find it exciting to, to see if we can potentially figure out the day of the return or the i should say the escape uh, it's an exciting thing to look at and then it, it prompts you into studying areas of the bible that you wouldn't normally study you know you know what what do i care about seven thousand lambs and you know, 14,000, this and that, and, you know, you got to do it on the eighth day of the, well, okay, if this can relate to the escape, okay, I'm going to actually study this. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, so now I went back to the Old Testament and I highlighted all the number passages and, and I write the numbers on the side because, hey, one day it might pop up. I might mm -hmm. have to know this, uh, you know, so the whole Bible becomes alive now because it's, have you guys ever been to an escape room? You ever heard of an escape room? No. So no. Escape room, uh, they're, they're kind of a new, like, well, they don't really do that anymore because of all this lockdown stuff. But it, an escape room was a really popular thing in my area in Ontario about the last five years where, you know, you would pay to go into a room. They would lock you in the room, not really lock you, but sort of lock you in the room. And to get out of the room, you'd have to solve 20 puzzles, give or take. And you have to go through the room and there's clues throughout the room and you got to read the walls and you got to hide, look under the chairs and you got to look into the, all, the, all the props they put in the room. And you have to solve one puzzle at a time. And finally... If you got the puzzles quick enough, you get the final key to unlock the door to get out of the room. And so this took off. It became super popular, and it's, they're called escape rooms. And I feel like we're in the middle of that right now. We're trying. We're actually trying to solve the puzzle, solve the riddle, one puzzle at a time. And we're getting closer and closer to escaping, you know, just like an escape room. And, and trust that the Holy Spirit is helping by revealing more. Yep. All right. Well, we're a little over an hour. A um, couple other things I did want to add. Um, I did find where, when doing the 
video I found where I looked at the, the how, how regular eclipses do occur because I don't want to over you know overblow what you know uh, the likeliness of things um, you know we, we the eclipses always occur on new moon full moon new moon full moon etc um, but what I what I found on the NASA website is that for the next 200 years blood moons which is a total lunar eclipse will happen on the average of one every 18 years actually more than 18 years you know and I think maybe if I do it, uh, the next video I'll, I'll try to make a timeline where we kind of zoom way out and see 200 more years and see what that looks like visually for all these blood moons we've been having versus more normal um, and I think that would show that that, that this time here really is there's something here right at this at this time very good so, yeah. um, one of the things that I was <laughs> that, that led me to a couple years ago actually to your channel um, Miyaku is um, I just can't help but noticing and I'm still noticing it now this sounds it's gonna sound crazy kind of a crazy topic um, so that so much predictive programming on zombies, zombie apocalypse. I see a guy, I just saw a guy in the pickup truck, he's prepared for the zombie apocalypse. I was watching uh, Roku and on the right, there's there's another new stupid zombie show. Um, there's just so many, there's Abraham Lincoln against the zombies. What is that? Is that supposed to be comedy? What is all this zombie stuff I'm thinking? And then I found, and that, that may have been the first thing that made me find your channel, is this biblical and you really, Seems like it actually is. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the the Center for Disease Control has actually got a zombie preparedness page on the yes. website, which is yes. just crazy. I mean, it's crazy, and they've got this um, cartoon that goes with it that points exactly to what's going on in the world right now as the reason for for that being. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, but yeah, it, it comes down to what the, the word says in uh, John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, I think, and in uh, Daniel 12, verse 1 to 3. So we, um, we are told that um, when the, you know, the trumpet sounds and God's um, shout goes out, uh, the dead will be raised, you know, some will be raised to... Yes, that one. <laughs> the, the dead will be, you know, some of the dead will be raised to, to glory uh, and then uh, and they will be shining like the stars and others will be resurrected to uh, shame and dam damnation, basically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you if you read Paul's epistles, he speaks about he speaks only about the ones that will be raised to glory, you know, or to be glorified. Uh, and he doesn't mention what happens to those who. Uh, who are not glorified or who will be raised to shame and damnation. Uh, and we know that both would basically respond to the trumpet blast that only occurs once. There's not, uh, you know, one now and one later. Um, not not that I can see from, from the word of God. But then Paul tells us that, you know, the, the dead in Christ will rise first. You know, so that those who are not dead in Christ might not, rise exactly at the same time they might come a bit later so i think that's where um you know normally if you read what paul writes he says you know the dead in christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain will be changed and we will be caught up together um uh, with them in the clouds and where we will meet christ uh, but you know if you if you only look at that um, section of information that paul provides he excludes a bit of information that we need to find somewhere else or that we are provided somewhere else but we we need to add it into our um, understanding of what is said you know so it could mean that the dead in christ will rise first and then every you know or they will be changed first what you know after they resurrected and then we will be changed second or it could mean that the dead in christ will rise f first and we are changed with them together at the same time Mm -hmm. We go up into the air, and then secondly, those who are um, dead without Christ will be raised to corruption and damnation or judgment, I suppose. So, and they will then also experience God's judgment during the tribulation, which is also something you know, you think that those who died without Christ, um, they will probably just sort of stand before the white throne and be judged at that point. 
but maybe not, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure, but it looks like there might be people during the tribulation that will have to face the, the judgment that will be coming over the earth after they've been resurrected, especially when um, we read about uh, what will happen during the, the latter end of the tribulation where people will seek death for five months and they won't be able mm -hmm. to find it. You know, so that means that death will no longer be part of the environment or the reality that, that people will find themselves in, um, which is, I mean, it's quite interesting. Uh, I, we can't imagine it at this point in time, but it's obviously coming. Yeah, and another scripture that you brought to my attention on those videos, and it was one that I had read over and over again, because it's one of my favorite passages, is the end of Isaiah 26, when it says, come my people under into my chambers, the Lord comes out yes. of this place to punish the inhabitants of the earth, um, and then something in the very last part of the chapter says, that, and the earth will no longer cover her slain. Yes, yeah. Remember, I just kind of glossed over that, but yeah, that's that, that's really real. Um did have a, um, a pretty good question uh, about if um, somebody asked if we're going to leave messages for um, those in the family that might be left behind. That's I'm, a good idea. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I, I'm blessed that my family's all saved, but um, that is a very good idea for sure. And another thing that I, I would definitely want to make sure that people understand is we are telling you in advance, we're not getting abducted by aliens. We're not, you know, the, because that's going to be, I think that's going to be the lie that the, mm. that, that the media, the Antichrist is going to say. They think they're going to say, hey, um, okay, all the haters had to get, uh, get removed by our friendly new alien friends. That, that you see the disclosure coming. That's the thing. Yeah, the disclosure is coming in June, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's coming in June, the, the disclosure. So uh, yes. even the fact that they said that they're going to have a disclosure in June is good enough. They don't even have to say anything. That in and of itself is you know so if something happens in may and we're gone see we we, we're, we told you we told you something was coming you know um, yeah 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 and just before this live stream i was uh telling ken and aaron about um something that one of the subscribers on my channel sent through jane c uh, and thanks for sending that through um about the uh the footwear uh release dates oh, you yeah. know especially in the the coming two weeks, I've got some very strange and interesting names for the shoes that they, they give and specific dates on which they uh, will release those shoes, which um, would seem to tie back to a um, ad that I just happened to saw today, you know, after I saw the comment yesterday. And this is basically how the, the Holy Spirit works when he uh, sort of prompts me to, to put out a video. And I'll hopefully have that ready by tomorrow or Sunday. Um, but um, it ties back to an advertisement by Foot Locker in 2019, where uh, they basically depicted the end of the world, um, you know, and they show alien aircraft coming and beaming people up. Um, and then obviously the zombies that are there as well and people, you know, fighting over these shoes that everybody needs to buy. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting because the, the sequence of events that we expect to see when, um, you know, the tribulation starts are depicted in the names that are given to these shoes and the dates on which they are released, which is quite interesting. So, um, and this also made me think that, you know, as when we look at the, the situation with, um, with Noah and, and the ark, seven days before he went into the ark, he was isolated from the world. You know, they saw him the last time seven days before the flood came uh, and that might be that might apply to you know the body of believers as well that you know seven days before the flood comes um, there might be things that happen that will deceive the world and you know make them think something else happened that didn't mm -hmm. and this would seem to be what those who are releasing these shoes uh, are saying with what they're doing and on the dates that they are releasing it so more about that coming. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, look forward to that if we're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it has to happen quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, time for last minute chatters. I have a question. If it's simple, don't give me a whole bunch of seven lines of all caps, please. <laughs> Um, oh, three days of darkness, Edmund. Good one. Um, 
Yaku, um, talk about the three days of darkness. Yeah, the three days of darkness, um, I know there are many people who say it's not biblical, but as I have stated many times, you know, the the God that we serve works in patterns. Is this after and the rapture? There is, so say again? Is this after the rapture? Yes, after, after the rapture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, where was I? Uh, he works okay. with patterns and there's, uh, in Egypt, obviously, you know, we have the first instance of, of that darkness that, that comes over the earth. And then also in Amos, you know, there, there's a, a specific prophecy that, that speaks about darkness that will come over the earth. And we know that it might, might have pointed to um, Jesus' crucifixion where darkness came over the earth at noon. But there's also a specific aspect in that um, chapter. Let me quickly just find it. Um, uh, let me just see. It's 9 and 10. Okay. It says, yeah. Uh, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and boldness upon all head, or uh, upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only sun and the end thereof as a bitter day. So, I mean, if we look at this and how it applies to Jesus' crucifixion, there was definitely not sackcloth upon all loins and there was no not boldness upon every head. And it wasn't as the morning of an only sun uh, which ended up in a bitter day at the end. It was joy after Jesus was resurrected from the, the dead. Um, so there's definitely an application of Amos 8 verse 9 to 10 that hasn't occurred yet. So, um, And obviously because we serve a, a God that works in patterns, um, we can know that whatever is going to happen will follow a pattern similar to what happened during Jesus' time. It could combine what, what we saw during the time of uh, uh, Israel's exodus from Egypt, where there were three days of darkness, uh, mm -hmm. and it starts at noon. So uh, once again, you know, what what I saw from, and I've, I made a few videos about the, the three days of darkness. Um, I, I can't recall everything that, that was in there at this point, but um, there's, there's definitely another fulfillment that, that, that's, that awaits. Um, and I mean, something that the Lord also showed me is that I think once the rapture occurs, his Holy Spirit will be removed from the earth for a short period of time. So, And that's when there will be a lot of devastation occurring on the earth. Um, and that would then lead into this new order that will be established. But then, you know, um, I think his spirit will return, especially for those who will be delivered during the tribulation. Yeah, I, I also think, uh, I think it's very likely that when Jesus died, he he died. Uh, there's a blood moon. Uh, that, that's yes. my assumption. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that there was a blood moon. I mean, it was a full moon, but I, my assumption is that it was a blood moon. My other assumption is, you know, something had to block the sun. To like, likely something blocked the sun, like a, a major object in the space or something. You know. Uh, yes, especially for three hours. Yeah, that's unusual. Yeah, yeah that's not a so, solar eclipse. It wouldn't have been the moon that blocked the sun. It had to be something else. You know. Yes. So and so we have this blood moon on May twenty sixth. Amos 8, uh, I think it's verse 10, I will turn your feast into morning, while your feast would maybe signify the second Passover, maybe, you know. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the 26th sounds exciting. And, I, uh, you know, if, it, if that is true, second Passover, and if he's going to do that on second Passover, and then Pentecost is after that, well, my theory would be, okay, maybe we rise, uh, you know, in and around the Passover thing, and then on you know, on Pentecost, they're all they're all hiding basically, and they're waiting for something, and mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit comes down. And so there's this there's this lull of time of what just happened. He's gone. We don't know what to do without him. And now the Holy Spirit comes. So it would kind of make sense that the restrainer leaves, and then a bunch of chaos for a little bit of time. Like, What's going on? And then in and around whenever Pentecost is, based on our calendars, you know, I would say the tribulation saints gets. Uh, gets the Holy Spirit or whatever, um, you know, uh, but there's a lull. I, I, I would assume that there should be a lull between the escape of, the, of you know, the people that are ready and the fulfillment of the tribulation. Since they're, they're, that's my opinion. There's got to be some sort of a gap there. Yeah, definitely. And I think we can also get some cues from what happened during Jesus's um, 
uh, crucifixion and resurrection. You know, so he was crucified, um, and I, I'm of the opinion it happened on a Wednesday because otherwise you can't have three days and three nights um, fit into a, a period from Friday afternoon to Sunday morning. That's just not enough. Um, and if 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 it's supposed to be seen as you know, just part of a day, then Jesus would not have said, you know, three days and three nights, you know, mm -hmm. so it's very clear that he differentiates between those separations that he's created. Um, so so, uh, on my calendar, uh, the 26th is a Wednesday, right? Yes, that's right. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah, yeah that's fun. So it's it's a nice <laughs> match. So um, yeah, then on the this as the day began to dawn on the first day, it says then the angel came and rolled rolled away the um, you know the stone before in front of the grave, and that would be when Mary also met Jesus in the garden and she couldn't recognize him, but then um, you know he basically went up to the Father to be presented as the 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 first fruits wave offering that needs to be presented. Uh, you know, according to Leviticus or the instructions in Leviticus yeah, um, the by the priest before the Lord, you know, so it it gets waved. And he also told Mary not to touch him, you know, so because he, he hasn't appeared before the father yet. And then later that same day, he actually tells Mary, you know, tell my disciples I'm going to my father and to, you know, your father as well. Uh, and then later that same day, he was between the, or in the midst of the disciples and told them, you know, handle me, see flesh and bone, you know, um, uh, it's, it's not a spirit that, that they're dealing with. So it shows us that he went up to heaven, um, he presented himself, as, himself and those who were raised with him as the first fruits wave offering, and then returned for a period of 40 days where there's a ministry that occurs with, you know, with his glorified body. And I think, you know, the Bible basically um, speaks about the the rain that is poured out over the over the earth, you know, the the former and the latter rain, um, and that rain would seem to be representing the ministry of those in glorified bodies to those on the earth before an outpouring of the Holy Spirit occurs right after that. So that's sort of the the pattern that we see in Jesus' case. So what I would expect would happen at the tribulation is that the rapture would happen. The Holy Spirit would be removed and there will be the three days of darkness or whatever period, time period of darkness there will be. Um, it might be three hours. It might, I don't know. It, um, it's a, I, you know, we take the cues from it's three hours during Jesus' case. It was three hour, uh, three days during Egypt's case. So it could be anything uh, between it. It doesn't have to be set in stone. But then, um, you know, during that time, um, people would be before God. Uh, they would, uh, be worshiping in heaven uh, and what I've also seen this afternoon is that if we apply the the pattern of Noah it would also provide us with a seven day wedding feast you know if we if we left like uh, Noah did uh, when he went into the ark seven days before the flood came that would be that would provide a seven day wedding feast time period for those who are taken away to be married to the bridegroom uh, and then after that, you know, returning for a 40-day or 50-day, whatever time frame ministry that will occur uh, over the entire world and not just in Jerusalem, as we saw in uh, Jesus' case, where those who rose with Jesus appear to many. And there's only the one passage in the Bible that speaks about that. So it's not like it's very evident, to, um, you know, and people know about it. But we have to ask why did... Uh, why does the Bible tell us that these people appear to to many in Jerusalem? You know, what was the purpose? Um, and then Jesus also said, the works that I do, the same will you do, and also, you know, more than what I did will you do. And I believe that would also um, apply to the, the tribulation um, harvest workers, I suppose. Um, that would be coming back to the earth to work amongst the you know believers and unbelievers that will be on the earth at that time and to prepare them for what will come then uh, and a second outpouring of the holy spirit that will lead to the greatest revival that anyone has ever seen um and i don't know if you saw if you've seen uh, what ken peter's uh, dream that he had in 1980 that is that uh, you know it gives you a lot of clues of what what he's 
um, what he's seen also fits into this pattern, you know. So he's seen the, the great revivals that, that occurred and um, the separation between you could later tell exactly who's who belongs to God and who does not, you know. So all of those little clues that the Holy Spirit gives, I think, um, helps us to make sense of, of what's going on. Yeah, I have a short, shortened, um, edited version of that Ken Peters, um, of his testimony. And, and, and the point that I was making is that, is that his vision in, reinforced reinfor the preacher of rapture. Um, but if you listen to the whole thing, he kind of spoke against the rapture. He said that he never saw a rapture. But then sh shortly after that, he was on with Sid Roth, and he w w was very pr much uh, in agreement with the preacher of rapture. Um, and then I linked uh, to that interview there. And from what I understand, that the host of the show or somebody who runs the show, they were they were they were post trib, so he didn't want to he didn't want to come against them. Not not sure about that. Yeah, something that I've seen is that the, the Lord sometimes use people, um, and they they give messages out, but they don't understand it themselves. You know, I've seen it happen yes. quite a, a few times. So with with Ken Peters also, I mean, he's he said in his dream he saw. Um, the dead raising from, you know, or the dead being raised to life, uh, and the shimmering clothes that they have, and then suddenly disappearing. But he never saw anybody alive being changed. And right. you know, if you uh, if you have to compare a dream to God's word, which which one are you going to believe? Um, I would say, you know, the word of God says, you know, those who are alive will be changed and then taken up. So there's definitely. Um, uh, Oh, yes. And something else that he said later in that uh, testimony is that he met this old guy who told him that he wasn't quite ready, you know, ready for what? So if if, if he wasn't ready for the rapture, uh, he wouldn't have been there, right. you know. So he didn't really pick up on that, which which I thought was quite funny. But yeah, so there's, there's definitely certain things um, that I've noticed, you know, the Lord would use people to to speak through them truth. But they, but their, uh, you know, sort of their mindset doesn't align with what what they are saying, and they don't understand some of it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I've I've seen that happen quite a few times. And uh, you know, just to, just to add to one of your points, that some people say, oh no, there's going to be a revival before the, the escape, and uh, I don't I don't see it that way. I, I I see a I see a revival after a bunch of repentant hearts after. Yes. It. Yeah. No, I when, I agree 100. percent you know, when, when the people that, like us that are waiting and watching, uh, when we're gone, uh, they're going to, uh oh, what just happened? Oh boy, repentance time. And yes. that's when yeah. I see the revival. And uh, that just makes logical sense to me. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Yeah, yeah me, me, me too. I know that I, I, I've, when I did follow some of the politics, et cetera, and, and false prophecies that were out there, it seemed like a lot of people getting caught up in that would, would say would, would talk of they seem to have this idea that there's going to be some great awakening or third great awakening and then this is going to happen it's going to be better than ever and the united states is going to become uh the, the best country that's ever existed on planet earth and blah blah, blah. yeah I'm not finding any of that in the bible yeah yeah, no. yeah, exactly. yeah yeah and you know it's, it's only getting worse like uh i just heard this morning my mom uh called my wife and uh my mom just bought a house out on the east coast of Canada, so we're we're sent we're in Ontario, but they've closed all the borders in in our provinces. You can't travel from one province to the other, and they bought a house, and the lawyer called her and said, "You can't come, you can't come and go into your own residence, because the border's closed." Well, what's what's she gonna do? I guess she's gonna live with me or or my sister until they open the borders, so she's got to pay for a mortgage on a house that she can't go to. Like, oh man, and. Um, I really don't think it's going to get much better moving forward. No. And that's just one small little tiny example of what's going yeah. on in this world. Right. right. Yeah. I don't, I don't see the enemy saying, well, maybe I'll back off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, no, no, no. Like have a nice summer, you know, just to be a nice guy. <laughs> you know, that I finally have the control I always wanted, you know? Yeah. But um, we definitely are going to win. And it's yeah. Going that's for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this might be a good time to to wrap up. It's been an hour and a half. Um, so I just want to thank you guys. Um, with time permitting, I'd love to do it again. Uh, this has been great. Um, thank you to everybody at the chat, everybody uh, listening in.
and I hope you've been blessed by this. I, I sure am. I've been blessed by Aaron's and Yaku's um, YouTube channels, and it's an honor to to be able to, to meet you guys and, and to do this thing. And we know that um, this is this is the exact time Jesus told us about in, in Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to happen, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. So, well, thank you guys. Love you guys. Love everybody here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. It was an honor to do this with you. Thank you so much for organizing this, Ken. That was great. Yeah, thank you, Ken, from my side as well. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you want to do this again, just let us know. We'll we'll be there. That's yeah, fine. Absolutely. I love doing okay. this stuff. Yeah, me too. Okay, bye bye. Bye.